There you go. <laughs> yeah, here I am. There you are. How are you? Uh, I'm good, thank you. How are you? <laughs> oh, I'm good. Actually, today I have like a whole day of like uh, telephones, so I'm. I hope I'm not <clears throat> tired to talk that much more about some stuff. Okay, so you've already been talking all day. Oh yeah, like whole day. Like I don't know. Some I think like once for uh, two or three months there's a day that that your phone is like ringing like constantly so it right. happened today i was like oh come on <laughs> <laughs> but the good thing is i wasn't talking about the painting at all so maybe yeah <laughs> all right well <laughs> we've had a lot of questions so <laughs> so it's already started uh yeah oh. People listening, they like the spontaneity and they like to hear the way the artist actually is, not like some perfectly edited, lovely sanitized, you know, they want to hear. Oh, no, I wasn't. I used even... to do that. I, I used to I used to edit everything and make it all lovely. And they were like, no, no, we want to hear what the way they actually are. So, again, uh, okay. okay. That's... Yeah, I, I think like nowadays people really want to see the real background of what's going on. Yeah. yeah instead of yeah yeah pretty images all the time <laughs> yeah right now for someone listening i'm talking to pishermislav blezik more commonly known as senier in poland how did i get out my pronunciation well like quite well <laughs> not the quite well <laughs> not the best one it's uh, yeah Przemysław, but uh, I'm I'm totally fine. I know that Pemislav. it's super hard to pronounce my name and my family name, so it's okay. It's okay. No worries. <laughs> I'm used to it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but this, the the senior part is the right, or do, or is the e or uh, I mean, it, in, is it senior or senior? No, I mean in Polish it sounds more like signer. It's more straight, like without any signer. Yeah, signer. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, right. Okay. Signer. Yeah, but I know that some. <laughs> okay. Well, I will. People trying to say it in in different dialects or different. Uh, um, yeah, everyone is speaking like different, like in the like English. So sometimes combination of a and i is like totally different in each country. So. Uh, yeah, but signer, I, I I always use it like straight up, uh, as it as it as it comes from Polish signer. Yeah. Signer, okay. Um, now if you're listening, just to give you time context for our conversation, today is Wednesday, the first of February, twenty twenty three. And just on the off chance that there's someone listening who hasn't actually seen your work, how would you describe your paintings, your murals? Hmm. Um, it's I would like I will, I will try to say it like as short as possible uh, but I think it's a combination of the landscape and portrait when the where the main role of the of the final image is uh it's the formal aspect of relations between colors and forms where the where the meanings of single objects are not that important you know they sometimes they just they just items to that giving me possibility to extend the possibilities of <clears throat> making the composition much more complicated or yeah, but my yeah, main focus is like landscape portrait is leading me to um, how to call it like properly uh, to discover some new ideas about the relations between the colors and uh, formal aspect of the of the canvas or of the of the format that I'm painting. Is it wall or or canvas? Does it matter? Yeah. Yeah. Very good. Yeah. I don't know um, <laughs> if it helps, but <laughs> yeah, no, it does. I think it's good. Uh, yeah. 
Uh, it's not what I was expecting. But it's very good. Very, you know, illuminated. Uh, now, we've we've had a ton of questions come in from uh, social media. Um, everybody pretty much lost their mind when they heard you were coming on. So, uh, yeah, a lot of questions. So we'll just All get right. into them. Um, RJ Fritz in the Philippines says, Good day, John and uh, Signer. Uh, I'm Fritz from the Philippines. Your work seems to become more and more abstract nowadays. They are really beautiful and complement the stylistic forms of your human representations. My question is, when doing these types of paintings, do you have any artists in mind who serve as inspiration or that might inform your work in any way? Lastly, who is or were the artists in recent memory, uh, and it might be from any discipline, that really moved you with their art? Something that really gives you an intense feeling of emotion. As always, thanks again, yeah, John. What a long question. <laughs> Yeah, inspirations yeah, yeah. basically. <laughs> oh, no, w- yeah. One of many, um, one of many, I can tell you. Um, so many inspirations. Um, recently, to be honest, uh, back in the days, I was mostly inspired by classical painters, like starting from Caravaggio, the the way how he described the light, and finishing at Alphonse Mucha, uh, Musha. Uh, <laughs> so. That was maybe my basics where I'm coming from those classical realistic uh, artists. And, but I was always looking to find a way to combine um, figurative painting with the abstract. So finally, when I, uh, when I came back re- really to, to paint landscapes because I was painting a lot of them before I went to art academy, uh, I, I really find a way to combine them in a way that I'm satisfied. So <clears throat> inspiration recently, to be honest, I'm much more inspired by graphic and motion design than than paintings. Be, because most of the uh, most of the inspirations I'm taking from the nature when I when I'm painting planners. So ideas about the colors and forms and some new relations are coming from studying colors in the nature but but some formal aspects i'm trying to look wider than just a just just a painting field um, but but if there was like some single artist that moved me like really um, I don't know. I, I would say like big for so far, like biggest impression was from me when I visited Alphonse Mucha Musha uh, show Slavic Slav Epic, where when where he painted like really large scale scale paintings, six for eight meters, but but the way how the single things were painted were amazing so i think because of the scale it amazed me the most uh, but i think <clears throat> as artists we kind of uh, maybe blessed to live in a times that that we have unlimited source of inspiration uh, because access to visual information nowadays is so easy that of course it, it might be also overwhelming i mean it might be too much for some people that so many things going on but but yeah like going back to question it's mostly uh graphic design when i'm looking some for some new uh formal inspirations for for my paintings right yeah okay very good Uh, belinda uh, del Uh, Pesco in California says, oh, this is going to be so good. (laughs) She's talking about our chat. I'd love to hear about other creative (laughs) endeavors in his family. Do his parents make art or music? Do they write? What about creative grandparents? He seems to have distilled observational skills and art making conviction well beyond his years, like it's perhaps woven into his DNA. Was he surrounded by it in youth? Who are his art heroes? Who inspires oh, him? Okay, you've art. covered the last yeah. bit, but just um, yeah. Actually, yeah, my father is a musician. Family, so yeah. 
um i think but but um, but like visual art i mean like paintings or some posters were n not really around me when i when i was a kid i think the most of visual information were coming from the cartoons for me so i guess my uh so my biggest connection to visual art in the childhood was like like cartoons uh, so but the fact that my father is a musician i think uh still when when we are like talking together i think he he put some seed like inside of me when i was a kid that if he was always like telling me if if you if you will find your passion just try to be uh, as good as possible at it and you will never be disappointed and so so taking advantage of that i was always looking for something that then i can find for myself to to do and when i finally get to to the painting i I just realized, okay, that's it. Now I just have to put a lot of work into it and then we will see what's going to happen. So, uh, so yeah, I think this, uh, this kind of like freedom um, coming from, from a father who is a musician and seeing him in his studio working every day was, was for me some kind of like a path that, okay, you don't have to go to work from eight to, to four or whatever different hours and you can still make a living so yeah I, I think that was the basics but not not that much more we we were never like going to museums with with parents uh, everything I discovered by myself but they gave me like really proper background to to make it and they always were supporting me so I think that that's the most important part of it yeah so even they were not happy that I started with graffiti, but <laughs> yeah, but yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, what kind of musician was your dad? Like classical or uh, he still is? <laughs> Sorry, he still is a musician. So <laughs> oh yeah, well, what kind of musician is your dad? Like, uh, is he classical? in an orchestra no, or I mean yeah he uh back in the days he started with a jazz uh, so so when I was young like he was like having a lot of cassettes from Miles Davis for example which for me as a kid was like really understandable uh, I, I'm I, I was like what's going on I, I don't understand this music so so, but but the fact that he was telling me, hey, it's it's a good one. You have to try. You have to understand. Was like, okay, I will try. <laughs> but but yeah, it was hard. So yeah, so he did after jazz. He was doing like a lot of different music. Like uh, even once he was doing some kind of uh, uh, something related to the church. Like uh, he was doing some co concert around the churches. So. Uh, yeah, he, he was doing like a lot of different genres uh, and now it's more between his, I, I think he maybe never get the success that, that he wanted to, to reach, but I'm super happy for him that he never um, forget his passion and he's still looking for, and he's still doing music after so many years and it's super nice to see that this passion is stay with him for a whole life so yeah yeah but I, yeah, I, and I, think... I saw that you you listen to jazz now in the in your studio oh yeah, <laughs> you, got, yeah. you got, came around to the jazz yeah i mean yeah jazz is like some maybe because it's a language that uh, let me to talk with my father about a lot of different things, you know, because it's our common ground. Uh, so, uh, but yeah, but recently uh, I turned a lot 
into some experimental music, modern classic, more electronic stuff, ju just for look for some new source of inspiration. You know, there's a lot of beautiful music coming from, I think, every genre now. Yeah. But, but, but I think I'm just curious to discover something different also. Yeah. 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 Uh, Lee Sun on uh, Instagram says, Sent, uh, Signer is one of my all-time favorites. His work, uh, his works are all incredible. I'd love to know what his path as an artist was, how he made it, uh, how he made it into a professional career, and his favorite moments as well as his, the burdens he faced along his way into the art world. So, yeah, what was your kind of journey into where you are now? I think that that would be the the worst answer ever but the funny thing is that s since the beginning i had a feeling that i just you know put the big wheel on the on the big mountain i just push it um uh, a, a bit and it starts like going like really fast uh now to be honest uh um since i i really understand that something's going on and it was the the time that we me and my friend mateusz started to work as a etam crew and we started to make a uh, big murals but i'm super happy that back then there was not that much uh things going on about like social media stuff because we i really put my attention of 100% just to keep working, trying to make it better. And somehow, you know, we we paint a first wall, we get another invitation, we get a bigger wall. And year by year, the projects were bigger. And I think I never did that much effort to make it happen. So I, I'm super happy for it in, in some point because I know that some people would love to do it and it's not that easy for them but i i don't know <laughs> sometimes i'm saying I, uh, that i have a lot of luck in my life yeah uh, right but i don't know i think i really keep my father's words since the beginning that do as as much as you can and do as good as possible and somehow it works i and i have a feeling that sometimes you just have to be in a good place in a good moment meet a proper person and and the other thing is that what i realized after a couple of years is the fact that i wasn't never like trying to push any situation like too much uh to to get something you know I just realized that most of the times the, the best projects that happen for me and some of them that push me like forward were the ones that happened naturally. That I met the person who shared the same idea. They want to go in the same direction to make something nice. And and yeah, that, that, that's happened. But of course, in you have to also understand in some point that Okay, you you reach some level, but then you have to find some new inspirations. You have to put sometimes twice bigger work just to make another step. Uh, so it's like a constantly growing uh, as a as a person, you know. So, but I, I don't know. I have a feeling that there is no advice. You know, I, every path is different. Uh, I just realized maybe it will sound silly, but being honest with yourself in terms of what you want to do and where with uh, with who are the people you are want to work with, um, it's it's just the question you have to be honest with yourself to answer. You know, if you wanna reach quick career and be on the top for a moment or i don't know it's it's i don't i don't think there is like a, one answer that will lead one each painter to the same place yeah 
And were you um, the sort of kid who drew all the time and then you sort of went to art college or how did that end go? Ah, okay. Uh, the, the This one. Yeah, I, I mean, to be honest, before I, I was, <clears throat> I started like, the, the, let's say artistic um, path, I was playing football and I never was expect. I mean, soccer. Uh, I ne I was never expecting to to be a painter. So, uh, but I had the injury and I had to like switch to something different. And I was like really obsessed with graffiti back then. And I just realized, okay, I will start with some visual art. And then I and then I realized I have only like two years to prepare myself to to get into the art academy. So I really start to paint a lot, a lot, because I never hold the brush in my hand before. I never paint with the oil paints. So it was really intense two years to prepare myself, you know, to understand um, all of the all the things that, that I have to learn to to get there. Uh, so so yeah, and our art academy of uh, the I, I think it's a it's it's interesting place uh, to to be. Uh, I, sometimes I have a feeling that nowadays people don't need that much academies because there are so many tutorials or videos done by artists and so many podcasts that you can hear about, like like you are doing. Like, if, <laughs> I mean. It, you you are you have access to uh, how many they are like 200 300 already podcasts you did uh, well t t t t yeah this episode is 266 yeah, exactly so you know if someone is following you he has like two, 260 different visions of 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 being an artist so but in our art, art academy you you have the same but you have some classes that maybe you you wouldn't try if you are not in art academy. Um, I, I I think in my in my case it was uh, it was really cool to 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 be surrounded with uh, with so many other people that that try, that is trying to create something and understand where I want to be as a myself as a, as artist you know in some point you, you just realize that you have like 50 people in the same year in the art academy but maybe a couple of them will end up doing something they really want to do so uh, and to be honest like polish art academy uh, in terms of like painting is not it's not giving me you that much promises <laughs> when you are a student but i guess it's like every kind of studies if you if you don't understand in some point that you have to uh, be the captain of this ship by yourself <laughs> you can end up in a place that you don't want to go yeah. <laughs> yeah and was the your art training was it like classical kind of figure drawing oh. like the sort of thing that they do in ateliers now or was it more conceptual uh, i think Polish the art academy in Łódź in my hometown it was like in between both like uh, there was there were classes that they were like really classical I was missing maybe a bit more of classical like because I was missing like anatomy classes because we we never had those uh, but in other classes we had like really conceptual way of thinking um so for me at the beginning it was really hard to 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 find myself because I was more into still trying to um, to practice a lot of classical stuff and when I was like talking with with the professors who was expecting some more conceptual uh, stuff I was feeling a bit lost but 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 that's normal I think when you are learning you know I think the studies it's a you have to you have to um, think about it as a as a best possible place to learn because you are every day you are uh, um, you are showing your work to to some professors and you are like giving back and forth some information like oh 
sometimes they can tell you that it's a it's a shit but <laughs> then you have to defend it if you know how to or you have to feel okay it's shit i will try something different you know so i think it's a best place to experiment you know mm. and uh, and talk with the people about random stuff so uh, so yeah it was like a because half of the classes I was going was more classical. So like painting and drawing was like really classical, like studying models, still nature and and all. And, and then the other side was like screen printing, graphic design. And so in this part, I was more into trying to find some concepts about the works that I was trying to do back then. So so yeah right um saskia Buschel in germany says hi uh, signer i love your beautiful vibrant work a lot of your paintings have imagery of eastern european countryside and rural life does this reflect the area you grew up in and how did you arrive at this subject matter uh yeah i'm i mean um... Yeah, when I was young, I was uh, for the summer holidays. I was always visiting my grandmother at the countryside. So I think there is a big reflection of that if what I'm doing like recently. But <clears throat> I think um, uh, the fact that I cho chose this topic was the after I was traveling a lot uh, for painting murals. Like every month, I, I was in a different country and and back then i then i was understanding that the the murals we are painting they are kind they are trying to to fit to every place by using uh sometimes um, sy symbolism from uh western uh let's say culture uh and in some moment i just realized that i was looking for always in my in my maybe a different way always in my paintings i was i was thinking like formal about the comp composition and, and the and the colors so in some point i understand that being like being let's say too figurative painting was making me only problems because i was i was trying to make some composition and to fill some spaces i was like missing for example the rounded shape and then to to fill this figurative story i had to find the element that fits to the story and fits in a formal way to the composition so i was always looking for the topics that will be comfortable for me uh, to to have the freedom in terms of the building the composition so around 2000 no it was to the it was the end of 2015 and we had uh as a atom crew we had a show in los angeles at the think space gallery and when i was preparing the, the the canvases for for that show i understand that ah we are using already so many western uh elements in our paintings that maybe it will be like really boring like bringing them to us when most of them they are coming from and and then i i was like why we are not really into using the elements of our surrounding i mean our culture the polish culture i mean polish landscape painting was like it is still one of the the greatest maybe it's not that popular but the artist we had in the past like in the um, in the beginning of 20th century and middle of 20th century they are like my one of my favorite still one of my favorite artists so uh then i understand that maybe it's not the topic i'm looking for because every painting i was looking for different topic uh so because my style was more illustrate illustrative back then so i was always looking for some situation for some topic that, that that will bring me a lot of elements to build the composition but after this show i understand that 
that it will be cool to finally find find our find my language which is connected to the place where i'm coming from and and then i call my 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 professor who was uh, teaching me before the art academy because he's organizing the every year like two week planners uh, in polish mountains if i can join uh, join this trip and and then at the first day when i went to to do some color studies in my tiny sketchbook i just understand that i was really missing that, this because i was traveling a lot and i didn't have that much time to practice uh like i mean everything i was painting was related to some project uh was it it was a show or i mean exhibition or it was like a sketch for the wall so i, I was missing this time where i can experiment to find some new ideas and when i came back to painting landscapes i finally realized okay the landscape is a language where i can where I, when i want to i can be like extremely realistic but when i want to experiment and be more uh, more abstract i can still do it and keep the language of the landscape so uh yeah that was the i thought i forgot sorry forgot the question but because i <laughs> I, I talk too much too much but i hope no no you, yeah you got it yeah no you yeah you did yeah no it's fascinating yeah fascinating um because to look at your work uh, like it's really interesting to hear you say how much landscape is important to you and i've seen you doing plein air painting um uh, so so to hear that and w thinking about your work it's yeah it's not the first thing that would come to my mind but now that you say it i can kind of see it yeah i i mean uh it it also ha happened because uh, i think in some point uh i was looking for i i think i was a bit tired to be honest of like traveling all the time and only preparing the artworks for some for some big things mm. and I, and in the same time i was missing some some new path to follow as a painter because i had a feeling that all the time i was only inventing the the situations that i want to paint and since the beginning i knew how the painting is going to look like and so so I understand that that going yeah. this direction, I will be really bored by the process of painting, because I still admire a lot of real, like yeah. really realistic painters. But by myself, I understand I have to find the pleasure in the directly in the process of painting, instead of. The, like bringing myself to the moment where I'm kind of like a machine machine to to paint you know so uh, and 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 through the landscape and studying nature I yeah. I really found that you know uh, so yeah 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 that's lovely so um how does the how does the uh, idea for a painting start for you you know like I, I do you make little thumbnails or do you write things down oh, or photographs or how does it start for you oh, and how do you collect your ideas you know oh recently it's uh it's really random i'm 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 taking a lot of pictures like when i'm outside especially when i'm in the nature of course um so yeah i mean most of the time there's a lot of sketches like and and the fact that i'm i'm still doing a lot of color studies in the nature so sometimes for me to start the painting is just to open my sketchbook and 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 just find the sketch that i want to uh, explore more more in, in in terms of details in the bigger painting so like back in the days my my process was simple i was sitting down i was sketching everything with the pencil 
like every detail of the painting. So first it was like really strong in terms of drawing, like really classical way exactly. So first one was a really uh, well done drawing. And after I was like, mm. but then I was feeling like I'm only like feeling the, uh, I don't know what's the name in English, you know, like you have those paintings with the numbers and <laughs> yeah. So, so in some point I feel, felt like yeah, that. Yeah, paint like, by numbers, yeah. Oh, it's boring. So, but, but now it's, uh, I'm really like taking most of the, most of the pleasure in the painting by like improvising. Uh, so I'm starting with some sketch, but, but I'm more into sometimes to destroy it than, you know, if, if, if there is a moment that I know how it's going to look like in the end, I'm always trying to, to find some new idea, you know? So, uh, yeah. Um, so sometimes it starts from uh, from the and and also the the fact that I'm always trying to challenge myself. So sometimes when I when I see some beautiful color, I, I'm just priming the the background to to trying to get this color, which I, which was in my mind or I I had the photo or. And then I'm painting over it. And sometimes the color studies that I have in my sketchbook, I'm trying to adapt to this color. Uh, so this color I really like will be like main topic of the painting, but, but of the different place or so, but this, but this knowledge that I gather through studying nature is is making it much easier for me because I can use any sketch and adapt the the color scheme to the to the color that I want to expose most in the painting. Yeah. So I don't know if there's now it's really hard to 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 tell the the real process because it's constantly changing actually. Yeah. Yeah, no I think I get it. Um I'm not really sure how to pronounce his name C Z O L K Solsk in Germany says, I'd love to hear about uh, his themes and topics in his paintings. Is there and has there always been a clear vision? Is it easy for him knowing what he wants to paint? Look forward to listening to the podcast. You've kind of answered that already, but if there's anything else you want to say about it. Um, the, the thing is that, uh, as I said, when I found the landscape, uh, when I came back to paint landscapes, I think, that I found the, the the place for myself. And I think when you have this confidence as a painter that I, you feel that comfortable in a, in a really simple topic sometimes, um, I, I think the, the, the big change once like, I'm big change of, of, of thinking like for me was the, when I, when once I was uh, at the planner and I decided to paint like really simple situation. It was just a flat surface of water, and uh, and in the background there was a wall of the fr coming from the trees from the forest. So it was like like nothing really interesting in terms of I don't know, like let's say the the postcard effect of painting that there's always like main topic, but then I understand being a painter like that's the real challenge to find something boring and by the language of painting colors and forms you are using you you can make this this place beautiful and uh, on the flat surface of the canvas so th that's the real challenge as a painter actually uh, because i think sometimes it's easy to uh to to find some object which is already interesting by itself so but and then sometimes repainting it uh you just you, you're just using the the power that that he has as itself but finding something which is not interesting and making it interesting in the painting that now actually it's it's uh, something that 
I really like to challenge in 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 the painting. So some the the themes now they are based, of course, of the of the landscape and the countryside like elements, but sometimes finding more simple shape of the body and trying to to find the other combination of elements that appearing in the landscape and then transforming into a totally different colors that never exist is is the is the way where i'm looking for the team but it's but as i said the process is constantly changing so sometimes the the themes of my painting they are changing uh, and most of the time the team the themes and topics of my paintings they are not really about the 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 subjects there that i'm painting they are more about how to build the 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 relation or the harmony between the colors and forms that i never did before so by using the elements that are so uh, common for me uh, so not common yeah yeah wow I've been, as you um, were mentioning earlier on, I've been doing this for a while now. This, as I say, two hundred whatever, and I've learned that um, I, I've learned to to register when s somebody that I'm talking to says something that's that's going to change me. And what you just said there is going to change me as a painter, I think, because that's pretty profound. That thing of like um, <laughs> finding something simple and then. <laughs> Through the magic of painting, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you transform I, it. You know, that's um, like that. That that's, I, I that's think amazing. It, now for me, it sounds simple, but to get there was like, I think because of the fact that when I was young, like most of the inspiration comes from comics, book, cartoons, uh, and and those mm. they are mostly focused on objects. You know the that the way how they are transforming another language uh to make another aesthetic that never maybe never been before or it's so i i guess and i i was the same at the beginning i was always trying to find some objects and trying to to put some kind of my label <laughs> over it you know yeah just yeah. to change it a bit but in some point, I just realized that sometimes I, I'm wasting time like like painting details, you know, because if you want to focus on colors, the details are not that much important, you know, because you can really uh, get the essence of the of the situation you paint, not through the combination of the details, but through the way how the colors are combined, you know. Yes, I think that that was Andre Deren, who, or no, one of the impressionists said that before the before the the painting become a horse or a battlefield is just the combination of colors in certain order. So yeah, yeah, <laughs> I think if you understand it properly as a painter, maybe it it will make it easier also for for you. But then you you have to also yeah, you have yeah, to also well, find your language in, in those you know so <laughs> it's still a lot of work yeah yeah um uh, Krippy Singh in uh, on Instagram says um hey I would want to know how does he come up with his ideas of space and figures and colors what are the kind of narratives you build while using all these things. Again, you've covered it a bit, but is there anything else you want to say about mm, it? I don't know. I think the the fact that I'm recently mostly focused on color, it it opens a lot of different new paths that 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 I can follow because before being uh, focused on on the subject and figures. Uh, actually the the painting was like just trying to research some new new <clears throat> new pose of the of the character or the one that or i don't know the different color of the shirt you know so 
I, I don't. No, I, I don't know if 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 it's. I think what I said before is it's already. Yeah, yeah. You're 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 sort of trying to get away from narrative by the sound of it, or you're not trying to get. You're not. You're trying oh, not to totally. get hung up I, on I it. I mean, yeah. I was bored with it because because the fact that you are painting murals, I guess a lot of people think that the subject you are painting has to be really important if it's so big. But but mm. the fact that most of the times I'm painting my friends <laughs> on the on the murals and and I'm never like telling to people that it's someone like really important. Sometimes I, I can hear that they are like super disappointed that there is no story behind the, <laughs> <laughs> behind the such a big mural. But but yes. then I'm telling them, but look look at the colors. I mean, if you like it, but you don't understand it, it's nothing wrong. I mean, and once I remember for the, it was, I think it was the first time I painted landscape <clears throat> on the on the mural without any any figure and and i remember there was like a couple of people like coming to me what does it mean and what's the story behind it and i in after like third person i was like super angry and <laughs> i was like hey if i would like to tell the story i would rather write a book than then make a painting, you know. Uh, <laughs> so, I think yeah. if you find the narrative in your in your painting language, you don't need to have the the big story behind it, you know, because the the beauty might be in the in each brush stroke or whatever, you know. I know it sounds like really romantic, but. <laughs> But but it, but I think it is, it is like that, you know. I think it's like with some ambient music, you know. Sometimes you need just one sound that makes you feel comfortable in the in the space you are you are staying. So it really depends what are, what do you what, what do you want to say as a painter through through your stuff. If you wanna um, be kind of like painting journalist. It's, I think it's fine. You don't need to that much focus on colors. You can really focus on situations. But and I think nowadays, I, I don't think there should be like talks like oh, I think painting should be more into the situations that are going on in the in the world or modern society or whatever. I think there is room for everyone if you want to be this kind of painter and follow what's going on in the world it's okay you know yeah but if you if you if you just want to escape it and give something for people that 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 is not existing and maybe that will some somehow make them feel comfortable that's still okay uh, i don't that's just my opinion <laughs> yeah 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 there's definitely room for everyone um, Curtis Valentine in London says, how does he get his references and how does he decide on the beautiful backgrounds he created behind his phenomenal figures? Thanks, John. Uh, actually, it's a longer search. Uh, um, sometimes uh, I'm... Uh, in Poland, we have like... Uh, how it's called in English? Allotments. Allotments. Yes. Kind of summer houses uh, in the city. That is like yeah. super inspiring for me, and, and also because of the fact when I was like, when when I was a kid, I spent a lot of time on them because my grandparents from my father's side they had one in a, in our city, and I spent a lot of time there. So I, I guess I just came back with the inspirations to the actually to my roots, and mm, but there are uh with the time you know they, they are removing them from the city so i think they are like vanishing point on the city maps so and there are still people who are really taking like old people 
who are really taking care about those gardens and sometimes seeing like the composition of flowers they are making I feel like wow I, I feel blessed like being possible to go there you know take pictures you know to talk with those people you know to understand yeah yeah the way how they are because sometimes uh I have a feeling that those people have so much like uh such a good taste of the aesthetic you know like combining those flowers together that I was like oh, yeah if I would just take a picture repaint it it's ready you know sometimes it's I mean like oh it's too good it's too good I can because I'm always finding myself that uh, I don't want to like repainting well, like one to one you know it just have to be always something different but sometimes it's so beautiful that when you start like changing this this situation it's not working anymore so <laughs> so sometimes it's hard so I, I I guess like travels like visiting like different places talking to different people and so and being focused on on the landscape even but when I'm like choosing the places where I where to go on holidays is all always a main thing in my in my mind like let's go somewhere where where I can really enjoy some beautiful nature so that's the main thing uh, for me so uh, and and as I said sometimes like going with the sketchbook to the place that is really boring that is also a great practice in terms of, of the view mm. and trying to force yourself okay let's paint it maybe it will be the worst painting i ever did but at, at least maybe i will learn something <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's it <laughs> yeah and and for the uh, figures do you take photos or do you work from life or how, do, how does that bit go oh uh, yeah oh, sorry yeah most of the times yeah i'm i'm doing like once in a while like photo sessions of my friends like for two three hours i'm asking them to do some random stuff and and sometimes i'm <laughs> using the internet uh i mean i'm i'm looking for for some different pictures on pinterest you know and if i like some if I like some shape of the body or how someone is dressed, I'm trying to, uh, you know, to prepare the, the same kind of stuff for my friend or for my girlfriend, just to pose in, in in this way. But but nowadays, as I said, like figures are not that important for me. So sometimes, uh, like I'm using the the pictures I took like three years ago, but I'm using them in a different in totally different way as i'm not that focused on the on the details of the portrait anymore uh i can mm. i can use them once again and sometimes more simple they are it's more interesting for me like like with the landscape uh, i think the i think as a painter when someone was trying to paint a portrait of beautiful person some sometimes as a painter you can be disappointed all the time because if it's a good photo of beautiful person it's already it's already done you know this magic and then as a painter yes. yeah yeah you can try to reach this level but you will never never do it because the the magic was captured you know between the exact the same colors maybe you can repaint it like exactly the same but it's not the point for me so uh and it's it, and it's the same with with the landscape you know it's uh sometimes when you see some beautiful photo of the landscape um it's it's almost impossible to repaint it you know to keep the keep the same spirit of the place because every detail count you know in this image so mm. um so sometimes for me much simple situations are they are the good base to start and the fact that I have like uh, hundreds of sketches surrounding me of the some color studies and others 
uh, I feel comfortable to go in every direction I want. So, yeah. Do, do you use Photoshop or something similar at all? Um, not that much. Maybe some sometimes in the last stage of painting when all when everything is done and I am not that much satisfied. Sometimes I'm using iPad like just to just to check some random ideas that I don't want to destroy because I'm sure that okay it this part like ninety percent of the painting is done. I don't want to destroy it by some you know I, I think everyone who is a painter had this feeling that you know when you are almost done with the painting then you think like oh now this crazy move will make it 100 percent better and then when you do it you feel that you know the warm inside of you is coming and you are like oh fuck that was the worst decision <laughs> <laughs> So I think that's right. Yeah, there's no there's no un undo button in real life. <laughs> yeah. So so from the experience, I learned that if you are happy, like like totally by your painting, and you just want to change like some small thing, just maybe don't be too classical. You can use Photoshop, iPad to check the possibilities. You know, but but to start mm. the painting, I'm not using it that much. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Sylvian on Instagram says, "Do you have any advice on composition?" Oh, so many of them, but <laughs> but the thing is that what do we want to get from the composition? That's the that's the main question you have to ask yourself since the beginning, I guess. Um, I, I don't know. I think it, the the experience and working routine it's the the best advice, you know. Mm. and trying to sometimes challenge yourself to uh that that was also what my teacher said once that uh sometimes having this possibility and and feeling that you can paint wherever you want and and the fact that you know that in every direction you go you can reach it 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 can be also your weak point because because you can you can forget about the um, the the real topic you wanna you wanna paint and you can overload it with with the stuff that oh look I I know how to paint this I know how to paint that I know you know you you just sometimes forget that there was some reason that you start to paint and sometimes you just show me like okay i have great technique great great skills and the whole painting is about it you know that let, let's say it's kind of like showing balls or whatever um but <laughs> 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 sorry for that comparison but <laughs> but but you know what I mean. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I do. So, yeah, but yeah. but so, sometimes like, and then he said like, listen, like sometimes when you paint, and you you have to understand what's the what's the goal you want to reach through this painting, and then you have to adapt all of the elements to make it understandable and that maybe some people can can read it from the composition so i think like it's hard to say if there are like any advices like in the in the composition i have uh i think like i of course there is a one i i always like recommend the book of kandinsky uh point line to the plane or so, something uh uh something like this uh sorry because i always say it in polish i will check the the name in english <laughs> yeah point and line to plane yeah that's the uh that's the sorry yeah that's the title so i, I that that was the book that the that we we had to read in the first year of the art academy in our school and it really changed my mind like uh, of way how how to see like a single element in the painting that 
there is nothing in the painting that i mean there's everything in the painting makes a difference you know every color every uh, every object so so this book is like really cool too and it's not a book that you will read once and you you will feel like oh i opened the door with the knowledge it's super boring actually because <laughs> it's always like <laughs> Yeah. it's always talking about almost the same stuff but from a lot of different points of view just maybe to get you closer to the idea but yeah, right. but but it's super cool so if someone wants to focus more on the composition that that that's the thing and uh, that's my advice but but then it's just experience you know like uh i think it's like uh trying to trying some new things in the in your paintings you know to understand how they works and i think the, uh, also what i realized from my practice is that when when you paint a big scale pieces and it, and sometimes it for like for me it takes a month to complete them after 3 weeks some parts that are finished I consider them as a as a blank empty spaces because I, I'm so used to them that I'm always almost seeing them as a empty place in the in the painting. So uh that's why I was telling about the advice from my professor because because then like feeling like oh I already painted it like three weeks ago, I'm already bored with that. Maybe I will paint something more over it just to show that oh i can paint another thing over it to make make the painting more interesting it's not really of course it maybe will be showing your balls again <laughs> yeah exactly so sometimes <laughs> it's good you know to have a one step back and having a break to understand if your painting like really needs that you know yeah 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 that's brilliant. Um, Martin Neitram in Berlin says, hey, thanks, Dalton. Oh, you're welcome, Martin. Um, Signer is a total inspiration. It would be nice to know how he approaches the value work in his figures. I find it absolutely astonishing the way he hatches and simplifies the features in the characters. Thank you both in advance and keep up the amazing work. Uh I think still it's the same, like experience and the working routine, you know, with the time when, when I prove to myself that I know how to paint like real realistic portrait, I was like, okay, let's search for something different. So studying color, let me to understand in a better way, how, how to build like different situations just with the relations of colors. So and also the the good thing which helps me actually is uh actually it's photoshop but i mean um, from time to time i i'm uh because i i love music and i like to be a part of it as an artist so sometimes i'm i'm designing some record covers and most of the time then uh i'm switching the technique and I'm doing a drawing, scanning it, and then I'm coloring it on Photoshop because it's also great practice because in in this medium, you can really change a lot without destroying an image, you know? So you can change, you can check like 1000 of different possibilities, yeah. which is good and wrong in the same time. And because you can be really lost to, to choose the one or, sometimes by changing so many times you can really lose the the essence and this this honest feeling which was hidden behind the first idea you know so mm. uh, but it's a perfect medium to experiment to uh to yeah to to look at the same painting in a two, like three four or five different vi 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 variations so um so yeah i think it's 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 practice most of the time there's not one golden rule that will tell you how to make the 
the good painting you know it's every time like improving sometimes that i think it's the best idea after one month uh i i just realized it was like nothing special actually <laughs> so uh so so yeah i i guess the the yeah, the values of color are really important for me so uh, sometimes it's funny because uh, once I had I really like this story because I came back from my studio to my home and my girlfriend back then she was working in a big corporation and when we sit to a, to a dinner she started like telling me the stories from the from, from her job and it was like two hours like of complaining about you know the the relations there and she was like okay that, that that's enough but how was your day i was like then like i was like struggling whole day to mix the perfect blue like <laughs> <laughs> so uh sometimes it's about it you know that you can spend <laughs> Sometimes I'm so obsessed to find the to find the the perfect like combination between colors that I can spend one day just mixing one color, changing it constantly. So so yeah, that's some sometimes that's it, you know. You just have to you you just have to fight in the in a way, you know, in the studio uh, to make some steps, but that's of course it's always worth. <laughs> that's a great story no 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 that's my like sometimes i really like the story to share like how, some because sometimes like um, as an artist like people who are being artists and making a living out of it sometimes we maybe we can have a feeling that oh it's so like it's so boring people are always thinking that it's a it's a it's an amazing job and then we we think that we are really struggling with something and like comparing it then to other people's problem is like oh i'm living in a totally different world like <laughs> yeah 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 now if you're thinking to yourself god i'm really enjoying this podcast i've listened to a few now and they're brilliant and there's so many of them and I've learned so much from listening to them. And you know what? If I met that John Dalton fellow in real life, I'd love to buy him a cup of tea and have a chat with him. I'd love to do that every month if I could. Well, now you can. The tea part, at least, because this podcast runs on cups of tea bought for me by people like you who listen to the podcast and send me the price of a cup of tea once a month through the Patreon account. That's patreon.com forward slash John Dalton gently does it. All one word. And if you're one of those people who already send me cups of tea through Patreon, thanks a million. The tea is lovely and I really appreciate it. Now, the great thing is that if you can't afford to send me the price of a cup of tea or you don't want to, that's fine. You still get exactly the same podcast for free. It's sort of an honor system where the people who can afford it and want to pay for the people who can't or don't want to. So it's all lovely. So if you'd like to send me a cup of tea once a month, you can do that through Patreon. I'd really appreciate it. It makes a huge difference to me. Uh, Sophia Centurion on Instagram says, um, <laughs> well, it's long, so I'll just get to it. Uh, how did you get to start playing with color in that way? Or is it always something uh, that was into your work? Do you do color studies before starting your work and how do you approach them? Basically, any tips to start understanding the relationship between colors and how to yeah. control their values. Thank you both and continue doing amazing work. And there's a few more questions like that. I'm not going to read them out because there's lots of long. Uh, but yeah, just if there's anything you can talk about to do with what you've learned about the color, because you're um, you talked about it, but I, just, yeah, anything you can pass on. Yeah. I think, uh, yeah, once again, like doing a lot of color studies in the nature, I think painting in the nature, I would like, because back in the days I was thinking, oh, there's, I mean, there's so many pictures on the internet that there is no reason to go outside. And of course you can use them, but 
then painting outside will it's 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 another level you know because the because the nature is changing actually like every, in every second and sometimes the view that we focus to paint after one one hour or half an hour is something totally different so and when i started like to to painting uh, like landscapes in the nature i was like oh it's impossible to paint this scene because it's changing like every 10 minutes especially when you have like cloudy day <laughs> that that sun but but then i i understand okay i i don't have to paint like single image i can use the collection of the different views so that was something that um, that really inspired me in painting in the nature that i understand that i don't have to like being stuck like to to paint some kind of like postcard effect that i'm choosing the nice topic and i'm repainting it as as it looks uh, so uh instead of that i understand i really want to understand the mechanism of the light and how it's changing the nature and how the nature is affecting the color by itself so when you understand this mechanism mm. it's it it gives you like unlimited uh, field of experimentation because if you if you start using the the subject you are painting as a as a base where you can uh when you can adapt it by your not, not adapted sorry um uh, as a when you treat the 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 scene as a something which is only the beginning and you use all of your uh, experience and ideas about the painting then you can create something new out of it and give some new meaning out of it and in the same time capturing and gathering those different moments in the in the same scene if you if you do it properly in a way i think you you can really capture the the matter of time in the language of painting because you can describe one scene from so many different views that that it it really tells the Mm, the story about the essence of this place you know i don't know if <laughs> if if it, if, the, if my message was clear but i was trying to yeah it was now i'm kind of shocked into silence that's pretty profound <laughs> okay okay again that's that's two. Oh my god I'm gonna be a different person at I the end thought, of this conversation i, I thought it was so <laughs> complicated that you don't understand it so <laughs> No, 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 I get it. Um, but what, like, it's, I can, you know, you you explained it so well that I could kind of see it. I could see the passage of the sun over a boulder and how if you painted that, it would be the same as the way people talk about light shaping a form, you know, like on a figure or something like that. Um, yeah, no, that's pretty amazing. I mean, actually, like, I was, be, because I was always, I'm, always in a close relation to the music because i'm listening to the music all the time i work um sometimes i was kind of jealous <laughs> that musicians the they can create one song and people are playing it for years and and as a visual artist i think it's hard to, harder to do it because we use our eyes to see all of the day of course ears as well but but um, um, i don't want to say something wrong but with the painting i was the the fact i was talking about the time i was and i'm still trying to 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 be as close to the music that maybe the the painting is not something that people will be excited ex i mean to that will get excitement from from seeing it but if they if they maybe start like looking at it and with 
every another look they will discover something new that that will be my then maybe i will reach my goal you know that yeah. to create kind of a uh, for the last show, uh, I call it some kind of compositional chain of forms and colors that that is making a loop of time on the flat surface of the can on the of the canvas. So hmm. uh, I think that's that's recently the where where my studies are going to like you know to. Yeah. to you know, yeah, that's brilliant. Yeah, but still, again, it's just the practice behind of it, you know. I think it wouldn't come so to me without, without like studying in the nature, you know. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Um, Marie on on Instagram says, "Looking forward to this conversation. Thank you, John, for your thoughtful and always inspiring podcast. Uh, you're welcome, Marie. Um, I'd love to hear about uh, Signer's choice of mediums. How does he get his acrylics to blend so seam seamlessly, especially when painting skin? Mm. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. The thing is that." Um, um I, I get so much into acrylics that i feel like super uh, comfortable with it so i think some things they just happen naturally you know but uh I, in some point i uh, i leave uh, painting with the oils because i understand that working in acrylics both in the studio and in the murals that will um, will be will make it easier for me to to make the same effect that I'm studying on the canvas to approach it in the uh, large scale in the in the murals, you know, because yeah. I, um, but I don't know. It's like I think like. Painting in acrylics, you, if you find a way, it's so easy. Uh, <laughs> maybe I don't want to say like directly, but there is something behind the acrylics that is making it so easy, <laughs> and I discover it uh, with the. And some sometimes I I just understand it that the fact that when I was studying, I was buying like really cheap acrylics. I think it led me to this idea, but I will keep it for myself because it's so stupid. <laughs> <laughs> sorry it's so stupid no, i think it's so simple that Did... but oh, it's so yeah, simple it's so simple sorry. and stupid i i think if i will i think after <laughs> after you know this kind of like serious conversation about the time colors how how it affects then saying something like this will be like oh come on <laughs> no i i think it's it, Oh no, definitely, definitely say it because um, people struggle with acrylics um, and the drying time, and that's the thing. Like oh, they, particularly if the they're drying time, I think know, is a blessing. Like, yeah. But but okay, like uh, when I was like using like cheap acrylics, I understand they are so bad that never I can never get the uh, the full coverage of of if I want even if I want to get the 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 flat color on the on the canvas it was always like there was always some transparency so i just realized okay if i will then build the the flat color out of five different colors five different colors which are transparent if you mix it properly in the end you get the flat color which is in the same time really rich because you use, use five different colors in the same really close to each other like really close shades to each other but when you well like five of them next to each other you can see the difference but when you apply all of them together on a on one surface they they are creating something uh unique so i just understand like wow it's a sometimes it was a blessing for me to use like really shit acrylics because then it gives the possibility to <laughs> Uh, to build like flat color out of five different layers and it was like and then sometimes uh, people when they see my paintings in the show they they think that i'm using the oils because sometimes the the 
the color in the in the flat let's say flat areas they are they are so rich but it only comes from the <laughs> comes from that yeah so you're using oh, the drying I, time to your advantage there and you're doing a sort yeah. of a glazing with I, the acrylics I, I, really so i never thought that the drying of the acrylic is a uh it's uh, something wrong I, I always like was like that's super cool i can like change the color so many times and still even the fact that you have to apply sometimes a couple of layers that's that's a blessing because the color will be really rich if you do it properly yeah yeah does that make it make when you're doing the murals does that make it take a lot longer because you're sort of painting the the paint you know you're painting the mural many times or is it different on the murals the, the funny thing is that sometimes i'm doing murals much faster than my than my canvases i i think on the murals i'm so focused on <laughs> on uh on the work the i think it's also the fact that the fact that um, there's something behind the murals that is which uh which I really love is the fact that you are disconnected from from reality when you are painting it, you know, because you are you are high on the lift. Uh, nobody disturbs you. You can play your music, and there is only you in front of your painting, and you don't care about anything. Of course, the you can mm. you can have the same studio the the same situation in the studio, but the fact that you're working on a really large scale and you are like somehow so high above the above the street level is the it's something like really beautiful and and the fact that you have like limited days to complete it i think in myself it's like it, it's forcing on in myself the 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 maximum of the maximum focus to to reach the goal you know even i experiment a lot with the colors uh i'm really into just focusing on and and the fact that i'm going away from home it it removes all of the stuff that you know i have every day here and it distracts me from from my routine of painting so so sometimes i can complete yeah, like, yeah. like huge mural in mm. in 12 days and then i'm struggling with the with the with the painting yeah. which is in this in the terms of composition and and complication of the elements it's maybe the same but in the studio i'm i'm doing it for a month but i think it comes only from the situation that in the in the studio i feel much more comfortable and it gives me possibility to, to change some some parts of the paintings much more times than than in the than on the wall on the wall you have to just do the decision because every yeah. wrong decision is yeah. like one day of of repairing or one day of your painting because it's such a massive scale that sometimes you know i'm just applying like flat color it could be a half of a day so wrong decision about the color it's another half a day <laughs> <laughs> yeah so yeah we have some questions about murals coming up so i'll i'll save i'll save it till then um susan cartledge on patreon thanks for the tea susan says thank you john um for presenting such diverse talent on your podcasts so many artists have benefited from listening over the years best cup of tea i ever purchased you're welcome um, I'd like to ask Mr. Siner the story behind his snowman heads and the gifts he leaves in public. Also, I've noticed he puts hats on many of his subjects. Wow. Oh, that's a, I, I didn't expect the question like this. Now the, I don't know the, uh, the snowman. I, I think it's a long story, but I think the the fact that I'm kind of part of this muralist movement and a lot of and lot of artists that makes this 
movement like important valuable and and in the place that it is now they came from graffiti and street art background and most of the time uh, you had to you had to find your, your kind of logo or object or the, the so, some element that will be only uh connected with you so uh i think once when i uh, i was bored at, at at my parents place when i was still living with them I, in the winter time i i went to to some abandoned spot just to paint something and it was the i think it was the end of the winter so i, I was like looking for something to paint and i was like okay maybe i will just paint the snowman and 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 in the way how how i sketched it for the first time i was like wow it it really connects all of the things i looking in a composition there is a there is a line there is a big element small element so in the head of the snowman i found a really simple composition that 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 was really uh, comfortable for me and I just start like using it as a kind of logo for for some time I'm not using it anymore because I think that it it was too much in some point but it, it was kind of like some kind of logotype that that was connected with me and but 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 there's like not, not that big story you know the big behind of yeah. it so there's no story i want to tell by using this head this head you know sometimes i just think it's funny yeah. just to paint it in a i don't know in hawaii or wherever you know it's <laughs> <laughs> yeah but it's kind of like a street logo that that was uh connected with me for some time and what about the gifts you leave in public what i don't know what um that refers to ah uh, yeah i mean what uh, yeah i totally forget about it but i have to come back to this um so when i was traveling a lot and if it happens that in the place that i was doing some project i was releasing some print with the local uh printing uh factory or whatever i was trying to 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 hide one copy somewhere in the city uh just posted on instagram that hey around this area i i left one copy of my uh latest screen print so if you are around you can grab it for free so uh so and oh, and nice. to, and to mark the place i was most of the time placing the snowman sticker next to it uh. so and and the sticker was like three centimeters for three centimeters so uh you have to be really focused to, to to find it so so yeah for some time i forget about it but yeah i definitely have to come back to it you know because i think it's a nice thing for people yeah yeah so thank you uh for the person who wrote this question because i totally forget about those gifts uh, gifts situation yeah uh so there's a few questions about style um, Tiger for Lily in Berlin says, what was the process of getting to the developed style you have? What were the to-do lists we want to know? And Manson Williams in California says, hi, John. Thanks for interviewing Signer. Absolute legend. Here's the question. Signer, your work is uniquely your own, creatively original and personal. Can you talk about the development of your style and the, any tips for those wanting to push their own creativity in painting? And uh, Gulu, Guillaume in Leroux in France, I'm sure I slaughtered your name there, sorry. I saw an evolution in your style to something close to um, Kupka, late work with the vertical color lines you use for landscapes. Could you explain how did you come to this evolution in your work? P.S. I love your work and seeing how you evolve. <laughs> so, yeah, style. Yeah. Want to say anything about style, how you got to your style? Um. I think it uh, for me it was like always like I said before for a long time I was looking for the for the subject that 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 will makes me feel comfortable about the painting so 
Mm. So combining the figures and the landscape, that's that, that's the place. But to to really find it, you have to just discover totally different ones. You know, you have to try the the stuff that that you really like. Sometimes you have to ask your questions. Where is your where are the what are the roots of your aesthetical taste coming from because uh when once i i did what was the most uh impressing uh, visual stuff that impressed me when i was uh, younger when you do the list it's much easier to to find the answer like what will be the the honest uh, direction for myself i mean so for me for example it, like i said before was like watching cartoons like watching uh, a lot of comics comic books uh, um, playing video games um, and being also interested in cl really classical art so sometimes when you <clears throat> when you gather all of those subjects together it's like okay it will be hard for me to avoid sometimes the the really weird and uh, colors combination that that are related for so, for some reason to the to to the way how they were combined in the cartoons you know that all of the colors are really bright uh so i think it's just like practicing going to museums like seeing other artists like what is interesting in other artists work and how how that affects my painting how how i can use the knowledge that that painters already gathered through all of those ages and to mix it with my aesthetic to find something new it's a sometimes it's like a really long and boring path that you have to follow as a painter but but it's you have to just sometimes challenge yourself that okay i painted something which looks too much like like thing that i was inter uh, impressed by or inspired by so then you have to ask yourself okay i how can i i can get away from it or um it's i think it's about like constant like questioning yourself like uh what's the direction i really want to go uh especially nowadays i just realized that that some of the artists maybe they just wanna be too much uh famous on the instagram bar by gathering so many likes instead of painting what they really want yeah um so i so my only advice is not not being focused on the numbers uh under the post on the instagram it's more about like because for me it was like a simple question one one especially when the when the pandemic time starts and in one hand i was like okay nothing changed for me i'm here in the studio every day <laughs> as it was before but then when you realize that i want to do it like till the end of my life so i just have to find the pleasure in challenging myself as a painter and find the the pleasure in the in the painting process instead of trying to chase the goals that are not important for me as a painter uh, i yeah yeah so 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 about the style it's uh i think if you if you do a big research in a history of art like every artist start by copying some other artist works but uh trying maybe not i don't want to say that you have to copy at the beginning but trying to understand why other artworks are working so good and why they are so good what makes those artworks good 
and all the same trying to to, to find the mechanism beca- behind the artwork and gathering all of the inspirations from from a years and trying to I, so most of the time i'm i'm saying it's not about the style it's more about the aesthetic that you present yourself as an artist because the style could be recognizable but aesthetic could let you to do if you are a great painter with a great aesthetic i think even if you are well known from the figurative stuff and someone asks you to do abstract stuff abstract abstract painting and someone can say oh it looks it looks like this painting from this figurative guy because of the 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 aspect how how in the abstract painting he combined the forms and shapes and colors it makes it so uh, so comparable to the figurative stuff he's working but so in the same time it's the same but it's different that, that i think it's the the aesthetic you reach you know style mm. you can change but the aesthetic is something that gives you this uh kind of the um, freedom and uh um, I, I miss the word uh freedom and uh and confidence uh, with your with, with your workflow to go every direction you want and you will still keep the essence so uh but but in the same uh, to get there it's just the routine and practice nothing more actually <laughs> going to museums uh buying books uh also even like i understand like forcing myself to live listen during the painting different music than i was listening before because it's also like uh, uh the privilege of our times that in one second we have access to every music that that is going on so in one hand we can say ah but there's so much bullshit yeah behind there's so many shitty music i i think it, of course like everywhere but but in the same time there's so many people that you can reach that that are doing beautiful stuff but they are maybe not that popular so i i think it's uh uh being surrounded with so many beautiful music movies and the uh, and the music it's only advantage that we have to wisely use to uh, to discover ourselves in the in the painting process yeah very good uh jack sure on instagram says do you prefer canvas or mural work uh no i i love both i mean uh when i was painting a lot of murals i was missing painting canvas when i'm painting a lot of canvases i'm missing painting murals so yeah it's like never ending story but because of the fact what i said about the painting process of murals i would say that there is much more excitement of of completing like great mural instead of of the canvas you know yeah uh, i think the the fact that that finished canvas you will watch it again and again when you are going back to the studio it's killing the moment but the fact that sometimes i'm finishing the mural the day before i'm leaving the place is like uh okay i'm i'm finishing and i'm saying goodbye to this piece and maybe i wouldn't have a chance to see it again in my life so maybe that that makes the 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 process of painting murals much more valuable but i i generally love to paint so the mural or tiny sketch doesn't matter for me yeah uh, Rob Evans on Instagram says, uh, thanks for doing this interview, John. You're welcome. Signer's work is quite beautiful. A technical slash process question. The large scale murals uh, are so fluid and gestural. How does he translate or transfer these bold strokes or gestures up on up in scale? 
no the same practice <laughs> that's the worst to reply but yeah like also experimenting in murals like trying to find like different brushes bigger rollers bigger brushes to uh sometimes to um, to get the same feeling of what you are doing in a canvas you have to find a trick to make it in the mural because sometimes to make the i don't know the the line that on the sketch is is just like you know gesture of like two milliliter, millimeters move of your hand on the on the wall it has to be like five meters long uh, uh, line so, <laughs> so sometimes it's just about like finding the trick but but the same like uh mm, even sometimes the i think when i was like more focused on details when i made a mistake in the construction of so, some element you can see it because the because the object wasn't uh, well constructed but when you when you focus more on colors sometimes when you do mistake on a large scale it might be advantage um, uh so uh i don't know i i just i just have a feeling that sometimes the uh what uh what is wrong on the canvas can be good on the big scale and and the opposite you know so uh but but yeah uh, through the years i i never was was maybe two or three times i was using the projector for the sketch uh any other time uh, i sketch everything freehand uh it it was the it was the wise decision because a lot of artists they are projecting but then i just realized i just want to keep this you know uh, actually, I just realized that the the sketching of the mural is the most mm, most funny process out, because after you just have to really fill the huge spaces of the colors, you know. So the first day when you are sketching on a big scale is super cool because you can do like really big, uh, you know, lines and so. So yeah, like doing everything freehand, I think it led me to understand also the 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 tools that I'm using to create it better, and then to reflect from the sketch what I'm using, what I'm doing on a big scale. It's much easier when you uh, when you feel this confidence behind the behind the tool you are using. I think I will I would compare it the same with the when you learn to paint with brushes you know to 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 use to use the, their shape to 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 reach the 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 proper shape of the brush stroke so sometimes it's easy to make it on a on a small scale a sketch but if you have to then transform it to the canvas you have to find a way to do it properly so it's the same with the murals, but just the scale is different. But, but but the mechanism is the same. You have to understand the the most important part of your work and how you want to uh, do it on the big scale. Find a way to do it on the big scale. Yeah, I had um, Fintan McGee on the podcast a couple of years ago, and um, he he does he just does I don't know if you know, but he does big murals yeah, yeah, as well. Yeah, well, he was saying the way he does it is he um, he'll grid his reference drawing, and then he'll put he'll make a big grid on the side of the building, yeah. and he'll just keep he has his phone with him and he's checking his phone for you know so that his drawing is going to be correct you know do you do something like that or are you completely uh, i'm the free? grid i'm using only in the in the moment that um, that i know that that the sketch is so complicated that i mean the, the 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 design for the mural is so complicated that i i cannot waste time of uh of doing a long research in the sketching part you know 
if, if I'm confident mm -hmm. with the with the idea from the beginning, and I know that there's a lot of work I have to do after the sketch time, sometimes I'm I'm using the grid, but but so, most of the time, uh, the first day of painting mural, uh, uh, I'm calling it like uh, playing time, you know. So I'm just checking all of the tools in the oh, at the spot. Uh, I'm checking all of the colors if they are like proper ones, and then if I have a lot of time, I'm just playing with the freehand sketch and. In the end of the, this playing time, in the end of the day, I am just taking picture, and on the Photoshop, I am just checking how far I was from the original sketch, and sometimes I am not far. Yes. <laughs> so, uh, but it's only because of the fact that I was doing it from the beginning. So sometimes I already feel the the scale. Uh, so yes, uh, I recommend like. Uh, sketching freehand because all it, I also understand it as an advantage in in a large scale paintings because sometimes when you're preparing the sketch on the on the on the, on the sketchbook on the, or, or on the paper you you are missing the scale and how this scale of this of this sketch is working with the surrounding area so when you when you are still have the one or two days to to adapt this sketch to the surrounding area that for for example that oh if if i will uh, make the character a bit smaller it it will be in the exact level of i don't know the tree next to the next to the wall so yeah. then the composition of the of, of the mural is is taking so many links to the surrounding area that's for me like really important that that's still like sketching freehand i can really understand where i'm painting in terms of uh, formal composition you know yeah 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 um paulina hmm, i'm gonna <laughs> quintenska in poland sorry paulina says uh this is so exciting i wonder where and how he learned his skills we went to the same school he was a few oh. years above and he was already a great painter i'm also curious to know how he got to do murals all around the world especially in the u.s mm. so you've mentioned about that it is a uh, a snowball that just started slowly and gathered momentum I got that bit correct <laughs> and uh, a lot to do with luck but yeah is there anything else you want to add to that yeah um i mean as i said it was the also the good moment that uh, when i started to i mean when i get to the art academy i was still doing a uh, lot of uh, kind of graffiti stuff in the abandoned places so when I get there and I start working together with with Mateusz as a part of uh, as a and we created Etam crew like every weekend we are trying to go somewhere to to paint some wall uh, and in this that was the moment that the the movement of muralism was rising and and we just hit also the right moment and we are trying always to to get the biggest possible wall every everywhere we go and i i think we just have fun out of it and we really put the focus on okay let's do as much as possible and let's see what happened and also as what i was saying before that was the time that uh there was no like social media no facebook no instagram so we were not focused on like thinking about some like oh maybe if we do this it will be more visible there or whatever we just focus on work and i think it happened in the in the good moment we were you know of of course uploading our images to the to the um, that was the the photo log that was the the first 
kind of like social medium that we use and a lot of the graffiti writers and people who started doing like smaller and bigger murals they were using this platform to exchange the images upload them to to be in touch then there was like a couple of different platforms that you can uh, that you can uh, be contacted by the other artists from the from another part of the world because they are traveling they want to paint something in your city if you can guide them to to some nice spot where they can paint or whatever so it was like really pure passion behind of the every decision of, of painting so i guess it, it's hard for me now to say because i sometimes i i'm receiving a lot of messages from young artists and they they asking me how to build their account on the instagram properly but to be honest i have no idea how mm. to do it because <laughs> <laughs> because by myself i i started by posting my artwork just, just like that you know not even like knowing if the quality is good for it so uh so yeah it 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 comes naturally with the amount of work we and and the fact that at the beginning of this movement and our uh, let's say um, activity on the on the mural projects was the fact that there was like no money behind be, behind most of the projects so people can only invite you pay for your travel uh, they can sleep you on your on their couch in the house they can give you a big wall not that much paint that you can but whatever you create that it's yours so every, every time we we get like some projects that were looking crazy like going to a really weird place painting the the big wall in a really shitty scaffold that you know was like constantly working when we were stepping on it it was it was kind of risk but we didn't consider it as a risk we just were having fun of traveling meeting new people and painting big walls so so that's and then, yeah. then you know the mural scene grew up to the moment that every bigger city has the festival so at the moment we already had like quite good portfolio of the murals and and mostly the people behind those projects were people from the from this community so they already kn knew us so it was the as i thought said maybe it sounds different but when i'm saying it but from my perspective it was like really natural process you know yeah so yeah yeah um Muzi Belachu in Ethiopia says, if you could visit and paint a mural anywhere in Africa, where would it be? I don't know. <laughs> to be honest, the, the thing is that the, the traveling for murals, if if they are organized well, or it, it's super cool to visit every place. Every place is different. I really like to, I would really love to have the time to to travel all over the world to paint the murals, but in the end, it's it's not that easy project to make it. But I think I would love to visit the all the countries, you know, to to see the the difference between them. The that that's because the funny thing is that I I travel a lot, but to be honest not that many times i had the chance to see most of the places you know because it was always like landing next day you were starting the mural so most of the time my most of the memories from the trips is like uh, the airport hotel the the area around the wall and maybe some one one extra spot from each city <laughs> so yeah right yeah uh, <laughs> so and the the other thing is my attitude that when i paint and and i for example have 12 days to complete the mural and at, at the sixth day i'm like having having a feeling like oh i am almost done 
and then it makes me like uh, what if i will change the the left side totally of the painting i still have a time so <laughs> so it happens that most of the times <laughs> when i have 12 days i'm painting 12 days that's <laughs> yeah, yeah so some sometimes curiosity of the of the new composition is stronger than you know the uh maybe the the curiosity of tourists <laughs> yeah right um diego glazer in denver says i've noticed that you and bet i'm probably pronouncing that wrong have such a a compatible style with each other are there ever disagreements during collaborations of course but they weren't they were never like uh, above the friendship we had i mean for for some time we are traveling all the year together so we had a feeling like we almost like a couple because you are spending like whole day with with, <laughs> with the same person you know so uh maybe you are not doing all of the things like a couple but you sp you spend you have to create something together you have to go to eat together find the the place that you like bo both like so of course there was a lot of uh, disagreements but uh but they were never like like serious you know i think it's it's a bit different relation between the two boys and boy and a girl i think two boys when they are like angry on each other they will not talk to each other for five minutes or uh, and after that like oh, okay come on let's let's go back to to reality you know we are still good <laughs> friends so so there were moments of silence but <laughs> not the serious ones <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. nice um Chris Beatty in Chicago says, how does the scale of your work affect the viewer's experience? And how does the scale of your work affect the experience for you as an artist? Um, yeah, uh, that's the scale. scale. Yeah, mm, that's all. Actually, that's a important question because uh, also being an artist and choosing the, the right size for your paintings, it's, I just realized in some in with the time that it's super important uh to find the right scale to to make yourself comfortable um so my early experience with the with the with the preparing artworks for the show were like most of the galleries were brand new because also the movement was a brand new kind of for the public so most of the time it was like yeah please don't go over the size i don't know like 100 for 70 centimeters but after a couple of times i understand like being a mural painter and painting is such a huge walls uh, it affects me that in the studio i also want to paint big but so uh so i was like like extending the the, the sizes of the of the of the canvases with every show and yeah it happens that on the last show i was like painting extremely big which the, the biggest piece was like 380 for 10 meters uh so i would love to to be honest to paint <laughs> this kind of paintings all the time but i know it's not possible in terms of uh i i mean i painted it in the gallery i was preparing the show in my studio is impossible because it's too small mm. so but uh, but i just realized that um, with the with the really big paintings the if you if you will make a good composition um people can really um, have a feeling that they are surrounded by the colors because when you have like small canvas, I don't know, like 30 for 40 centimeters, it can be a beautiful painting. But the fact that the size is so small, it's it's just my personal like experience with those that 
you always have a feeling that there's a big distance between you and the artwork that because of those scale uh and with the with the big ones uh not but not always the the bigger is better uh, <laughs> however however it sounds but uh of course it's much more uh, uh visible when it's bigger but there are a lot of uh uh, hard things to struggle with the composition on a big scale that it's not only the decision okay i will go bigger i will be better it's no no you have to understand the the size of the painting and to and use it in a proper proper way uh i think the best comparison would be i don't know if the for example work of rotko will be so valuable if all of those pieces will be a for size <laughs> you know what i mean i do yeah but yeah i, I know I, I know it it's the simple simple example but but choose the proper scale for such a let's say simple in terms of elements uh, painting it has to be the it has to be a good decision you know and and proper one also the the fact of the tools you are using you know that that also will affect your painting in a different scale. If you are comfortable, I don't know, with the big brushes, uh, you will you will reach totally different uh, vibe of your paintings by painting huge canvas and the small one using the same brush. Because on the small ones, sometimes you are not allowed to do uh, the best part of your paintings that you might do on the big scale. So, um, yeah. So yeah, but I think the uh, it's good to try from from the time from time to time. But for me, the 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 best uh, practice is to paint a like really huge canvas, and after that, try to do the really tiny sketch in my sketchbook. And the funny thing is that sometimes bigger excitement comes from the smaller sketch than a big uh, big painting. So it's not always. <laughs> <laughs> yeah um maso lagal on instagram says signer love your art you seem to me like a pure artist that's why i want to ask you if it's possible for a pure artist to live a happy and accomplished life or maybe you feel in constant research in constant evolution of your vision a true <laughs> pure artist vision i don't know i i think sometimes the life of the artist is so mythologized um, of course, it's like uh, I think it's beautiful and and sometimes ugly in the same time. But but as I said before, sometimes comparing the the things you are struggle as a painter with the things that people struggle in the let's say regular jobs, those are different things. And so sometimes it's good to to have something in in your life that keeps you in a kind of reality uh, but i don't know what well, i don't know even what's the meaning of the pure artist i i think if you will like read the biographies of different artists you can have a different vision about what is a being of pure artists so uh, to be honest i never thinking about about it that much i'm just focusing of uh, everyday routine in the studio being here even i that when i don't have anything to do and try some different stuff um so uh, but but i'm always telling to 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 my friends if if i would start complaining that will be like really bad because to be honest i'm feeling like super happy that i can do the, the that I can enjoy the passion that that bring me to the place that I am now. So, uh, yeah, I think sometimes it's hard to, maybe to uh, mm, to make it work together properly with the with the with the family. But you know, it's a uh, it, it's a 
it's life is a process so sometimes you have to adapt to the different situations and and use it in a in a way that will be good for everyone so but but yeah i'm super happy i don't know if i'm a pure artist uh, but <laughs> but but i'm really enjoying what i'm doing and uh and yeah uh all right um Keisha Tabachuk on Patreon. Thanks for the tea, Keisha. Keisha is a former podcast guest as well. Episode 172, if you're looking for it. And she says, oh boy, I love this artist. John, please ask him if he's got to be doing workshops in Poland sometime in the future. Oh, I would love to, but the thing is that um, I even have some friends who are, who, who are having like really beautiful places that we might use for it. The worst part is that I don't have a time for it. It's uh, um, and once I did it in Sevilla, in Spain, and it was three days workshop. And the I I understand that uh, it's not good for me because I'm a workaholic and perfectionist, and it it was exhausting for me. Like three days, like group of <laughs> it was beautiful but i had like 20, 12 people who came to the workshop and we shared like beautiful time but after those three days i was like wow i ne i never expected it so hard you know i mean because mm. because i was trying to to speak with each person like individually and find a different subject for everyone and it was super tough and i i really uh start to respect all of the teachers <laughs> that they were doing a good jobs in the in the workshops i mean i would love to do it i'm i'm not saying it's not going to happen uh maybe it's just about the finding a good moment in uh yeah in between the projects that i'm doing and maybe sooner or later it will happen. And I definitely want to do it, and especially in Poland, because uh, if someone from uh, um, from the other countries wants to visit Poland, uh, maybe he will understand much better the the places that inspires me, I don't know. Yeah, yeah, in, in context kind of thing. Yeah, so, yeah, I, I hope so. I mean, I would love to do it, but it's the thing that it's hard to find the time for everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, NM on Instagram says, advice for younger self-taught self -taught painters slash artists, please. And Anoush Ahmed on Instagram says, do you have any advice for young artists on how to go about building a career in gallery and mural work? Practice. <laughs> I think, again, I, I, uh, I think from... Through the whole interview, I think I was saying so many things that that you that I mean it's it's just the way I I was doing you know I focus on practice every every time I was I had some time in the place that there is some nice museum I was going to the museum to discover some new works I think also important fact is being open to what's happening in the contemporary art. In, and any other mediums and trying to not be so close minded for for the for the new activities that are happening all right how have you found the because you're you pretty much started as you say graffiti murals and then galleries how have you found the art business side of the you know the gallery scene okay. and all that kind of thing because some people have you know hard time other people have a lovely time where has it been uh, for you i think it was both like it was hard and lovely in the in some points i mean i mean at the beginning i we knew totally nothing about the way how to deal with the galleries so with the times we understand ah okay maybe the the way this guy worked with us wasn't the the proper one uh but you know oh of course it's good to have some mm, mm, uh, some uh, some artist friends that maybe already did some uh, 
uh, have some experience in it and they can share it with you. But the thing is, I have a feeling that after speaking with a lot of different artists, like every path is different. And sometimes, for example, for me working with the gallery called X might be the worst experience. And I would say to someone, don't work with them. It, it's so bad. But maybe when they met, they find the way like, mm. hey, okay, working with him was a nightmare. This guy is an asshole. <laughs> you know, so, uh, but but maybe for, for other person, that will be, maybe the advice is the, the guy from the gallery was telling to me wasn't wasn't that much important as they might be uh i guess uh it's always a sometimes a question if you uh if you focus on only uh trying to find the way to sell your artworks or are you trying to just to be to improve yourself as a as a painter for me it was always the second one. I was trying to to be better and better with every canvas, and and all the experience that I have with the galleries teach me something, you know. And there there is never like yeah. everything looks much better from the outside, like like you know this saying that you know grass is greener always on the neighbor's uh, side. Mm, so. I think it's important to 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 be honest with 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 your goals and and trying to sometimes to answer the all of the questions through the uh, through the question: Do I really want to do it, or do I need to do it to to make some step? Um, I was always trying to work with. With, with the galleries who will give me a possibility to, to make another step uh, with every show I was doing. So, so far yeah. it, it was my goal and, and I'm sticking into it. So that, that's my maybe only advice, try to work with people who, who, who will believe in what you are doing and with every project, they will give you a possibility to make some, some improvements of that, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Do you have a big art dream you'd like to achieve before you die? Art dream? Yeah. I don't know. Uh, I think every every day is is, is a different one. <laughs> no, I, I mean, <laughs> um, I don't know. Some sometimes I just realize by through the experience that sometimes the the goals that looks really cool from behind they are not that cool from from close up so um, I, I just hope I, I i can do i think the biggest goal will be that i will keep the the same progress i had through the last years and i will continue it to the to the to the end of my life if, if i could continue and keep the same passion behind of it that will be the 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 biggest win because I think sometimes yeah. that's the hardest part to keep, you know, this 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 passion of coming to the same place every day and doing the same thing. <laughs> so, but of course there are a lot of dreams. Yeah. But yeah, that's lovely. You know, it's it's hard to name one. <laughs> yeah. Okay, this is my last question. I ask this to everyone who comes on the podcast. If there's one thing you could pass on to future generations, what would it be? Um, ja, I, I, if if you would be able to to find the passion that will give you a possibility to realize your dreams, that's the the best what you can achieve. And if 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 you found it, try to do as good as much as possible to keep it. Uh, I would say that. I think because if you have a passion and you can make a living out of it, it's it's beautiful. And of course, there are some, some, uh, some maybe 
not darker parts, but maybe some worse part of it. But you know, it's always like uh, there has to be balance. <laughs> so, so yeah, yeah, that's <laughs> yeah. lovely. Uh, Okay, well, look, it's been lovely getting to know you. I really like your paintings and you are at that beautiful point of you just seem very in tune with what's going on um, without meaning to, I don't think. But um, because, you know, like I only have to post one of your pictures on Instagram and it just goes crazy. And as I say, there was we had way more questions than I had time to um, ask um, because you're very, very popular with um all the people who listen to the podcast. And I think I, I can only speak for myself, but there's something uh, very vibrant, not not in the color so much. I mean, the colors are all beautiful, but there's something very vibrant in what you're doing. And just from talking to you, it seems like the paintings are almost like a, a side effect of this inner process yeah. that you're involved in. And in a way, it sounds like you're not even that focused on the paintings themselves. It's like, yeah, <laughs> yes, but um, it's more like you're continually checking on the inside. And that really comes across, you know, they're very, uh, what's brilliant about them is that they're recognizable and yet they're um, they're very unusual, um, which is uh, an amazing thing to be, to be able to do in figurative work um because you know it's it, it it's the recognizable aspects of it that make it very easy for one um painting to look like a, one artist to look like another artist so what you're doing with it and like i've got a little window into it and as i say i've been changed by this conversation um oh, is so you. breathtaking and it, I find it really exciting when I come when I talk to artists like you who kind of are showing where figurative art can go and the different kind of possibilities that are in it. And um, yeah, it's been lovely chatting with you and and getting to know you a little bit. Oh, thank you, John. Uh, I really enjoyed the, the the conversation. I hope it wasn't boring <laughs> because sometimes no, far I... from it. <laughs> far far from it. Yeah, but but you are you are right uh, uh, about the one thing you said that um, yeah the 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 paintings sometimes are some tool to to a more deeper uh, conversation that is happening on the on the canvas. But but I'm super happy that that some people can discover you know because that really takes me a lot of time and good and bad decisions in the studio <laughs> yeah no I, well i think lots of people they get it they, they it they, it speaks to them you know and the uh, murals i'm kind of mind boggled with anybody who can do murals it's <laughs> i've had I've enough trouble just in you know a little small canvas in the studio <laughs> so it's um almost uh magic what what muralists can do but yeah no it's fantastic so um, I keep in touch with everybody uh, for, you know, Zoom tea or whatnot. So I'm sure we'll keep in touch. But yeah, we'll, we'll say goodbye for now. Yeah, thank you. So whenever you want to talk again, I hope we'll have a chance to speak soon. <laughs> Lovely. Thank you. I've never felt this good in my entire life. Make me some spaghetti. Actually, I'd prefer a cup of tea. A cup of tea would be lovely. So, yeah, just a little reminder, mainly because every second or third person who becomes a patron has got in touch with me and said, you know what, I've been listening to your podcast for ages and I didn't become a patron, not because I don't have the money, not because I don't think it's great, I just didn't get around to it. So this is a little friendly reminder that if you'd like to be a patron, you'd like to buy me a cup of tea, go to patreon.com forward slash John Dalton gently does it all one word or follow the link in the show notes to become a patron. I would really appreciate it if you could do that, particularly if you've been meaning to and you just haven't got around to it. It would be great. It would mean a lot to me. All right, thank you. Bye. We are the Argyle Pimps. So buy us a drink. We're better than you thought, but not as good as we think. We are the Argyle Pimps. So buy us a drink. Come on, buy us a drink. Come on, buy us a drink. We are the Argyle Pimps. So buy us a drink. 
We're better than you thought, but not as good as we think. We are the Argyle Pimps, so buy us a drink. Come on.